receive my love oh here we go Uh uh-huh you don't want to receive my love no not not right now really no okay remember that i mean remember that this is not you don't get to choose but you did this yesterday though did what you you so it's twice so you're been there's twice now that you don't want to receive my love explain what you do i.e yesterday i was in the middle of of getting a contract out to one of our clients yes and I was rubbing and I your was back. And I was under a lot of pressure. And I was rubbing your back, trying no, no, no. to soothe you. No, no, no. You're, going, you're you. going to give the whole story. What was the story? You wanted to also talk about the Bible. And and you said it's too much. I said okay. I had a little revelation. I thought would have been good. It was too much for right then because you were focused. Julie, you're lying. Ashante, what you're happened lying. then? What happened? I was in the middle of doing that contract. <laughs> <laughs> and you no, I'm laughing because you're crazy. What happened? And I, you were like, "Oh, listen to this," and I said, "Babe, I can't do both." And then you said you are going to learn. No, I said I was going to train you on oh, how to multitask. That's what you said. Yeah. You said you're going to receive this training. <laughs> yeah. And I was you're... playing, though, yo. I was joking when I said that I was joking. And then you were rubbing my back. Like, you're going to get this training. I was you playing. Gonna... We were joking. You are making this like, this is this serious. We was joking, babe. Okay. And, and we can ask Zion. He's my witness. My son Zion is my witness. Zion is your favorite. So oh, wait, wait, no, wait a anything minute. That That's you a say. whole nother issue you're bringing into the equation. Is Zion not your favorite? No. I love Zion different than I love King. <laughs> I love them both. And anybody else who's out there, so if you have sorry. children, you know you love your children different. It's just, it's, it's a thing. I love my children, all of them. I love them different. Juliana, everybody. I think see, that you Zion. love them, but you like them differently. Zion thinks that I love Juliana the most. And you always love Juliana. Her man King both. They both do. And is that true? I mean... Shantae, now this is this is going far too. This is way too far. I'm not. I'm not. Mm-mm. Nope. I ain't doing it, man. I'm not doing it, you guys. Listen. Another edition. And we're back. Of MMGA, make marriage great again. Another episode. Another ep. Back another, seat of my Jeep. Another EP. Another episode. That's what LL Cool J said back in the day. You feel me? That's what he so said. So here we it? are, ladies and gentlemen. We're on this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're back, man. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling stronger than ever. Um, you fresh. Had, you had like he was down bad or something. I was. I was. I'm feeling stronger than ever. You know, uh, fresh out of that Florida sun. What is going on here? What do you mean? What do you mean? What what's, What do you mean? How many shots of espresso did you have today? I had three. No. As a matter of fact, I didn't have any. I didn't have any Starbucks today. Did you have coffee? No, you had Starbucks. It was just homemade. Well, I had, it's not the same, y'all. The Starbucks that you do at home, it's not the same as when you go to the drive-thru and you get the three shots of espresso with the extra cream and the six Splenda. You know what I mean? It's not the same. You know? It's just not. But so, yeah. I had me some coffee. I'm feeling good. I'm back. I'm stronger than ever. We're back collectively. Yeah. You know? Um, individually, yet collectively. Oh, my you God. You feel me? You feel me? I mean, what's good? You're just really on one what's right good? now. What's good? I'm feeling good right now. I'm glad you're feeling good. You feel good. me? I'm prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, I uh, had class today. Mm-hmm. Prepared. Felt good about class. It was good. Well, and, tell the uh, world that your wife had to rescue you out of an ice storm. Yeah, your, man. Your, your 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 truck. Yeah. So we the my truck was in the driveway. We had a crazy storm last week. The end of last week, leading into the weekend, all that. I hadn't driven my truck for several days. Um, my wife went out there and started it up for me. I thought I was going to be able to drive to school. So time out. Packed with ice. Don't, don't rush over that. Your wife. She did. 
got up this morning and knew that your truck hadn't been started in six days and went to start your car. Okay, but so let's 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 even dig a little deeper. So it's crazy. The is, reason I'm just, why I'm not see I'm what you're doing is you're thinking I'm coming up from it from a negative perspective. What are you saying? And I'm not. What, you what saying? I'm saying is is that there is no such thing really as a gender role. It's more of a like who needs it done. Yeah, I think that was good. And you know, the, the understanding it. I got up, got the boys ready. Fought with them to get them up, get their clothes ironed and all that. Yep. I got to be at school at 8.30, so she thought to herself, I'll start getting the, the boys ready. And I'll take the boys to school. I'll, I'll start the car up so that you can, you know, not have to waste any time doing that. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. That was great. I loved it. And then then, then I, I went got, out there. Yeah. And it was, y'all, ice, yay thick out there. So he there. calls me and he says, hey. I'm about to take your car when you get home. I got to go to school. And I, did. I said, eh, nah. I did. So I she... have an appointment. I said, and so what, what's wrong with your car? So I said, because it would give my car enough time to defrost. So because your me... appointment is not till 10. Let's keep be real detailed. Her appointment wasn't until 10. This was 8 o'clock in the morning. I needed to be at school at 830. And so in my mind... She could allow my car to just run some more, to defrost some more, because I needed to be to school at 8.30. Nonetheless, Nonetheless. she came home, and she went and got a spatula. I went and got the long grill spatula. Out the the kitchen. With the the edges on it. So she started chipping at the the windshield. I start pounding on the hood of the truck because the ice was this thick. Ice chunks. Chunks. It was bananas. They was huge. And so we finally got the ice off. Finally. But it was 8.20, and I needed to be in class at 8.30. So I was able to call and zoom in to class. Ain't technology dope? Technology is amazing. You won't never miss anything. You don't miss nothing. It's a gift and a curse, though. It can be a curse. We had a um, one of our good friends, man, um, got into a terrible accident on Sunday. A mm-hmm. huge piece of ice flew off and smashed her, her windshield. windshield. Brandy, as yeah, a matter of fact, Brandy, fact, who does our audio yeah. production. She was on her way to church. A big chunk of ice flew off somebody's car. Off of a Honda Civic. Boom! Blasted her windshield, bro. Dented, Dented it the in. roof. It could have been Whole tragic. Whole windshield just, I mean, it was, yeah. it was terrible. It could have been tragic. She was shaking up pretty bad. Yeah. But and it was on this, it was on a passenger side. If it would have been on that driver's side, it could have been It could have been all bad. A terrible. And terrible when accident. I was pounding my the hood of my truck and I was seeing the big chunks of ice that was coming off of there, I could see. Yeah. How easily like it could literally bash in you know, a gravity. Ship. That thing fly up in the air and you're going 70. It's going 72 if not faster. And then they collide. Jesus. The collision of two things with crazy momentum. You always got to preach. I did. I slid that you in. Know, you know, just... The collision of two things with crazy oh. momentum. That's how I feel today. You know? That's how I feel today. How do you feel? I feel like it's the collision of two individuals with crazy momentum. Mm. Clash. I'm actually chilling. A clash. I'm, at, I'm extremely reserved you know, You today. don't want no smoke today? No. Okay, well then, let that be the reason. No. Then. Let that be the reason. It's then. not because you're... Let you're... that be the reason. Okay, I'm gonna let you have that. Okay, good. You know? I'm glad you're playing all somber. Yep. You know, you're you're so somber. I'm just in front chilling. Of you're so somber. Have your fun. Have your fun. Have your fun. The people need to finally see the truth. No, but listen, y'all, I feel good, and um, you know, I feel good about today's today's episode. I'm glad y'all popped in. Really, literally, glad you tuned in. But I feel good about today's episode. I wanna. What you wanna talk about today? I huh? already know what we're talking about. You're supposed to pretend like we didn't. Oh! And then flow into it. I don't know, Jew. What you Dang, want to talk about? I can't believe I'm trying to coach you through the whole thing. And we've been doing this. See, you, you, you hated got, that. You ain't you got hate to that. coach you, me see, through see, nothing. Y'all hear that? Whenever she hear the word coach, train, her independence kick in, and she don't want nobody coaching, training her, and nothing. Yeah, I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull it out. There's nothing to pull oh, out. God, yeah. We 10 years in. I'm going to pull it out. I don't fall I'm for those little tricks I want to pull it out. So let, I had to coach you through that. You did. Man, you, what would I do without you my... Know, 
best and, coach. Um, and I got some more training and stuff for you. You do. You know, as we move forward. You make me this, better. As we move forward in this. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all, I, I, I've, oh, been, man. I've been thinking about something um, just lately, and it's for real. This is serious business, and I think it's an area that I've struggled in over the years, and uh, and I think it's in my emotions. Emotional roller coaster. I was thinking more along that age time. Emotions make you cry sometimes. Uh-huh. But listen, it's uh, it's it's in the area of my emotions, and so, and I think today's today's topic, man, we want to kind of talk about some emotional maturity when it comes to marriage. Mm, yikes! You know, emotional maturity when it comes to marriage, and I think uh, I think it needs to be talked about. It's a topic that needs to be explored, and um. And really, we need to dive into it to kind of really work through emotional maturity in marriage or just in people that happen to be married. I mean, I think it's individually we need to be emotionally mature, but I think marriage presents some stimuli that can really shine a light on to whether or not if you're emotionally mature or not. Uh, that's what I think. That's what that's I think. Ma- does marriage have maturity? Like, how can I word this? Because, you know, we know marriage just is. Like, it's just, you know, the union, right? Mm-hmm. And it's the people that join in together that make marriage dynamic. Mm-hmm. So, but does marriage by itself, that union, does it hold its own set of, have, have, does it have a maturity no, I don't think marriage has a maturity, but I think I think the union presents its own set of challenges. I disagree. I think that the union absolutely has maturity because it has a standard. Well, I think I think people have maturity and the standard is the standard. The the, the vows are the vows. So you're saying when it comes the, to marriage. the standard pulls you up, pulls your maturity up. Yes, it's it's up to the individual. Okay. So you think maturity increase. only can happen in a live being? Because the marriage standard is not going to change regardless of who's involved. But in marriages it. grow. No, m- people grow. Okay, people grow that are married. Yes. Marriage is going to be marriage rather not. If David is married, you're married. If I'm married, Paul, okay. Johnny, marriage is still going to be marriage. And Ronnie, I think Bobby, Ricky, Ronnie, Mike. Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. Uh-huh. And I, I, so I think because marriage is, is what it is, and when you when two people enter into marriage, it's up to them to grow, to mature, to get better, get worse, you know, whatever the case may be. OK, well, get you know, it. let's get into it. I think, you know, when it comes to like emotional maturity and I think that's one of the areas that I struggled in. And uh, it's really a long story, probably struggled. Yeah, F- continue. F- struggle, past tense, struggling. struggle, struggle, present tense, uh, could struggle some more, future. T- I mean, it just is what it is. I'm getting better, working through it. And um, what do you think was the was the um, the worst time that you could think of or 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 you would say the least mature time over the past 10 years of being married where you were emotionally immature? I think because I've gotten better, I think, at, um, initially in our marriage. What, what, like what was the cause of it? I mean, now that you're able to look back, how were you being immature? Because how do you even know you're being immature? It's not until you mature that well, you're able to look back. Well, no, it's not until you're presented with opportunities to display emotional maturity or immaturity. Okay. And I think you get presented with those opportunities through your involvement with people through different stimuli that happens in life, different turn of events and all of that type of stuff. Okay. And so, you know, um, for me, I was in isolation for a pretty long time. Yeah. And so my involvement, you know, with people was limited by choice on my part. Yeah. Because, you know, I was in prison and I wanted to basically isolate myself so I didn't have to deal with people. Um, and I didn't have to deal with situations. 
and it was a coping mechanism of mine. And so what helped me cope in one season of life mm -hmm. end up being, I think, um, end up hindering me. An hindrance for sure. In another season of life. Yeah. And so I think my emotional immaturity initially in my marriage was was stemming from my coping mechanism in a previous season. And so I, was, I don't know if that's really you being immature. Um, I really think it was adjust, like an adjustment period. I think in marriage, when you first get married, um, there is the, there is a process in which you are adjusting to being married. Mm -hmm. um, two people being thrown together that have two completely different life experiences Mm -hmm. are now codependent on one another, you know what I mean, caring for one another. It's a lot that goes into that. Mm -hmm. So yours was for survival. Yeah, but and I, so I think because you were because if you take the penitentiary out and you and you weren't isolated for those 4 years, I'm not sure if you would have had that. Well, so I think it still is going to stem from involvement, intentional involvement with people intentional involvement, you know, with situations and circumstances. It absolutely does. But I don't know if you were immature. I think that you had to shed what you have been. You are a product of your environment. I think that you had to shed what the past four years had taught you the same way you would have if you would have come out and you were just bachelor living in L.A., having a time of his life. Like, you would have had to shed. There would have been a process I guess. And you're saying that that process is maturity. Yeah. The process is because if I was a bachelor living in LA or if I was a prisoner living in prison, the knowledge that I have about emotional maturity could be the same, hmm. but it doesn't actually mature until you're put in a situation to where you have a choice to make the right de decision. Got it. You okay. see what I'm saying? And so, and so I, I feel like, you know, for, for me, I was put in a situation where now I'm married and I need to be emotionally mature. Okay. Meaning I need to be in situations to where, um, I'm emotionally available. And, and that's really what I want to kind of talk about in this, in this episode is being emotionally available. Hmm. Um, because knowing what to do, and actually doing it are two totally different things. Do you think, though, that you knew how to be emotionally available? Yeah, in theory. I mean, that, I don't know. If, do men even know what that really means? So in theory. What's the but, theory? But, but to know how is something totally different. When you different. hear that term, so what in, do you think? In, in theory means emotionally available, meaning, um, you know, be there, be in the moment, be present. Um have care and concern, genuine care and concern. Like all of those things is is being emotionally available, right? See, and I I disagree. I believe for me, now this is a woman speaking. So you don't think anything I said is I mean, not even a part of it? I, I think that you, being emotionally, because well, what you're explaining to me is how you're showing up for the other person. And for me, being emotionally available is me actually showing up for myself, which then in turn makes me open to you. So you are kind of saying like what you have to do for me, mm -hmm. that's not emotionally available. That's you kind of just being empathetic. I think you being emotionally available is um, you like have healed through traumas. You're able to be transparent about your things. You're able to come and you're able to unload on me. Like that for me is what emotional availability looks like. And I think that that's kind of like the crosshairs with men is that men think emotional, avail being emotionally available means let me sit down. Let me listen to her. Let me, it's like, no, like, but what about you? Like you're still super guarded. You're still not being transparent. You're still not open. You're not emotionally available. So, I mean, I think it's two sides to it. Um, now, is, has a person healed and all of that type of stuff through their own trauma? I think that's one aspect. But if you're dealing with an individual that's done, gone through all of this healing, this inner healing, all of this self-care, all got, of this stuff. Why you got to do Right? That? Well, watch this. But then I'm not, I'm not available for you to hear your stuff. To, to be empathetic for you, 
that's a very narcissistic. So I, I, I think I think it's a it's a balance, you know, so like I was saying, in theory, I feel like I had an idea of what emotional availability was, but how to do it, I think, is where I lacked. Okay. And I think it's where a lot of men lack is, is how to, because a lot of the pressures of society, um, as far as, quote unquote, what a man is supposed to do and how a man is supposed to be and the roles of a man and all of that stuff, I think in a lot of instances, it alleviates men from having to be um, emotionally connected. Well, that's what I mean by mm. the uh, available. I think that when we talk about availability, it's more of a, you know, you are able to be open mm. to be open, not... Mm -hmm. Because you, you being sitting here listening to me talk, right? And I come and I dump on you, I'm dumping on you, I'm dumping on you. You think that that's you being emotionally available. That's not you being emotionally available. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, just I you sitting know. and listening to me. Like, you're not emotionally so available. How would you feel if I didn't do that? It's not. So what that is, is, is being caring and that's being empathetic. You don't think that's, that's part of emotions? We're talking about being emotionally available, so, meaning are you open and are you available emotionally? Are you, am, am I able to come to you and are you able to be like, man, Ashante, like I'm really going through X, Y, and Z. Like for me, vulnerability is kind of like the word I'm looking for. Okay. You're so, not being vulnerable. But I'm sitting here telling you. My so stuff. I think vulnerability is an aspect of it. But I don't think that's all to it because I just... I didn't say all. A moment of transparency. I just look at um, mine and your personal relationship. So a lot of your, I think, concerns for me was my inability, not inability, sometimes unwillingness to show care and concern for you. Yeah. So it had nothing to do with me coming to you and saying... Hey babe, I just but I, you know, I say feel that, so I feel so I feel so out of touch with life and no, internally but that, in I'm, my mind that's not you being emotionally <laughs> unavailable. In my mind, that was you just being like hard like a rock. But you always called it detached, emotionally. You, so yeah, emotionally detached. Me and I and I knew that that was because you were freaking in the penitentiary for four years and you literally had to ISO yourself mentally physically for survival so then when we got married we got married you weren't even home a year yeah I was. you were home a year yeah, over a year and then we got married and then it was like you were still like i'm in cell block 24 e you know what i'm saying like i'm still in this isolated stage Absolutely. where i cannot pour into you at all because i'm over here that's all well, survival but so i think for for me i I never really had a problem with expressing to you my issues. That was never the problem between okay, so you and I. Okay, so then what is your definition then of being emotionally available? I, I told you already. I told so, you already. Because I just only can go off of my experiences. And so my, like, I, I had no problem with telling you my thoughts, my feelings, how I felt about my relationship with my daughter, how being in prison hindered me, hurt me, helped me in some ways. You know what I'm saying? Like divulging to you like history about me as far as being molested and all that. Like those things, like I had no problem giving that to you. So for me, the way that I always comprehended was I had an issue with um, allowing you to do that to me. So we're having emotional reciprocity? I think it was availability. It was, I wasn't available to connect with you emotionally. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I, that's the way that I, I look at it. And I, I could be wrong, but that's the way that I look at it. I think the point being is that when you're in relationship and in marriage, it needs to be reciprocal. Whatever you can give, you got to be willing to receive. And so I think in a lot of instances, you know, like I was saying about men, we get into these situations to where like, as long as we're doing X, Y, and Z, 
Yeah. Then we're supposed to be okay. Did I, I some some food is on the table. Um, I'm going to work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the the tangible things. Well, I think in that you can throw in the bag what you just said. Like I'm there for her. I listen to her. I and so men go through these checklists where they think, like, I mean, what what more do you want from me? Because in their mind, I've checked it off. Like we talked about how your day was at work. We talked about your friends getting on your nerves. We talked about like we talked about that. And and for me as a woman, it's like, right, but that reciprocal of, of you, of me being that for you too. Now you're saying for us, it wasn't an issue. And I would challenge you and say, I think that you were very open about the things that were very, very noticeable and visible. And you weren't either ashamed to share or you were freed from that space. I think the more challenges that we've had, the, the longer we've been married now is the uncovering of you being extremely introverted, like stuff like that. Like, and I think that that was, you disagree? Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. it's never, it was never been a secret that I'm introverted. I that- mean, but just like dealing with people in general, like we would go to a birthday party or we would have people over the house and you'd be in your office studying like, Hey, mm-hmm. you can't do that right now. Mm-hmm. We have people over. Sure. And so you would, you know, and we've learned each other. I'm life at a party. You don't like crowd. You shrink. And so it's kind of like, hey, I need you. For me, that's you being emotionally available. Is doing what? Not being who God created me to be? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, I mean, I mean, let's, we're talking about maturity, and you, and that's what you lean on. I know. God I'm made saying, me like this. I'm saying, I'm saying, saying what well, you can't like. I think it's a danger zone for me to try to make you not no, be the I life of the party. I didn't say make. I think it's a danger zone for but you to try had, to make me had, the life of the we've party. We've had conversations though, where part of my maturity has had to be. I don't always have to be the life of the party. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You see what I have to deal with? Sure. This is what sure. I have to deal with. For sure. And then, and then part of mine is, is but I'm fairly social. I could be better. Yeah, I'm no, let's part be of clear. Mine is more you have gotten, you, you are light years ahead of where you were 11 years ago. You're not even the same person. So wait a second. In a good way, like you. So what are you saying? That you're That I was, I was bad before? What? Huh? Like a hermit crab. Remember the little hermit crab you used to have in the classroom and they go in their shell and they do like a little tuck ball? That was you. Literally. And you never shared that with me until right now on, on MGMGA in front of all in front of the on whole world. On YouTube. Hi, world. All of our millions of subscribers. In front, in front of the whole world, you shared. You I break mean, Julie, it's your line. I absolutely you told you you, you were this, a hermit crab. You break this news to me right now. You are a hermit crab. How am I supposed to and receive? And people be like, you know, you cool, but your husband or they didn't know how to freaking read you. How and I'm, I'm telling people like, no, you don't understand. He's really a nice guy. They're like, yeah, right. How am I supposed to receive this world? In a situation like this, no space to internalize and really, really like think about what's what's being communicated. You're you lying. Just break this news to me on You're YouTube. lying. You absolutely knew that that no, is what playing. everybody thought. No, it was hard for people to read me um, because. Which is a whole nother conversation of why I mean, people want to read people so bad. Yeah, it is a whole nother conversation. But I think guys just honestly um, really working through this whole emotional maturity piece, being available. And yeah. so at the end of this, we said availability is what? Availability is um, being willing to divulge your innermost. And receive. And being willing to um, receive somebody else's innermost. Yeah. Right? Um, care, concern. Empathy. Empathy. Not always trying to fix it. That's a man thing. Oh yeah. Like you give a you 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 vent to a man and he'd be trying to fix it. It's like I don't need you to fix. I just need you to listen. Right. And it's... tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's crazy. Oh God, we've had those conversations where it's like I don't want you to say that. And you're like, well, what do you want me to say? I want you to be on my side. And we've had, whoo. Yeah. We've had those where yeah. I'd be wanting to like cut somebody out or go off on somebody, and Julius would be like. I mean, but she wasn't wrong, though. That brought you up, huh? Men, husbands, don't you ever tell your wife 
that somebody that she, that she wasn't wrong. Don't you ever tell your wife that? That's never, never. Later on, maybe say it in a different way, but in the heat of that moment, you let your wife be right. Just, just go ahead and take it. Yeah. Don't be yeah. like, well, you shouldn't have cut him off. You're supposed to be on my side. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now later on, you know, slide it two in. Two weeks, a month. Slide it in. Six months. Slide it in. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you was wrong to cut him off, right? Like I know I was. But in the heat of the moment, no, sir. You do no. not let me know that I'm wrong. No. No. Because I'm right. Your feelings override right and wrong Absolute, in that moment. Duh. <laughs> That's so. That is. You, is that right? You ten years in the game, bro. Is that you, right? You know, it's not about it being right. It's about what works. That is works. That right. That works for you. It works for our marriage. No, it works for you. No, it works for our marriage. It works for you. Happy spouse. Happy house. It works for your marriage to you. No. Well, listen, y'all, right, y'all. whatever worked for you individually we're works done. for the No, work for we're marriage. done. Because he always wants to go all super deep. <laughs> no. Nah. You know exactly what I'm trying to say. Because there's just plenty of times where I've let you go on your little rants and raves, and I can't tell you you was dead wrong. I be wanting to. And I've gotten a lot better, but I used to tell you you was wrong all the time. Well, we're getting ready to go to another episode, guys. <laughs> this has been good. And uh, we thank do, y'all do. for <laughs> We thank y'all for tuning in for nothing. Be ready for the next one. What's it called? Another. Like I'm from Georgia. Yeah, I be ready for another. No, it's not right. And then and then we gonna come on with the next one. Then on the next time. We love y'all a lot. And just please continue to pray for him because it's not working. MMGA. Subscribe. Subscribe. Right Make now. marriage great again. YouTube. Go to the IG. MMGA podcast. Go to Facebook. Make marriage Make Marriage Great Again podcast. YouTube, subscribe. YouTube, subscribe. YouTube, cut the check. That's what... Okay, All right. we're done. I'll see y'all. Bye, y'all. Peace.